I came across this uh, clip on uh, AM Joy this morning, and uh, Joy Reid is interviewing Ileana Garcia. She is part of the uh, Latinas uh, for Trump organization. Let me first say that Ms. Garcia is definitely not one of the deplorables. She identifies herself as an independent. And in listening to her arguments for Trump, you know, she seems to be very rational. Um, she does try to shy away from the more negative parts of uh, the Trump facade. But she points to and locks in on uh, the specific, quote unquote, policies that Trump appears to push. And she obviously uh, likes to back away from the things like that uh, 3 a.m. tweet uh, and misogynist comments. My whole point is that she's ignoring his character, and character does matter. It really does. Because at the end of the day, the President of the United States is supposedly the face of America. And I don't think we want the face of America to be that of a racist, a misogynist, a xenophobe, you know, etc. But anyway, you can make up your own mind um, as far as uh, this particular segment is concerned. And honestly, I thought it was a, a pretty decent segment. The, the lady was basically facing up against four people who also made uh, valid arguments, but she pretty much stuck to her guns to the point that She's almost like an anybody but Clinton, but she didn't say that. You know, she just said that she had issues uh, with Clinton. But the one thing that got me was, at the end of the day, Bill Clinton was the one who uh, cheated on his wife. It wasn't Hillary Clinton. She was a victim, and she reacted or responded, and she lashed out. You know, we don't know what she did behind closed doors with Bill, but we do know what she did in the public uh, with the women that he was involved with. So, anyway, here's a segment. Um, it goes uh, pretty long. Uh, actually, it's encompassed in two segments of uh, Joy's show. But here we go. Joining me now is Ileana Garcia, founder of Latinas for Trump. And Ileana, thanks so much for being here. Uh, we just great. we just actually met um, a little bit earlier in 30 Rock, so it's great to meet you and to talk to you on television. So let's get your response um, to that barrage that you just heard. Donald Trump has obviously said a lot of demeaning things about women. Um, for you, just as a woman and as a Latina, what do you make of those previous attacks and his attacks on Ileana, uh, on Ms. Machado? Well, um, it's, it's, I actually chuckled on a couple of occasions and it sounds, uh, it sounds bad on my part, but I'm sort of hoping that everyone watching the program will give me an open opportunity to explain myself and not quickly offend me, uh, first and foremost, because I am a Trump supporter. Um, we basically went through a uh, voyage of, of Mr. Trump as a TV personality, as, uh, as an entrepreneur, as basically himself. Um, I try to cut through the fat and go straight to it. Um, he's obviously a very transparent person. Uh, he has vulnerable moments. Obviously, he is not the most politically correct person. And it's not that I'm justifying him, is that I'm, I'm explaining to you how I feel as I watch it. Everyone is entitled to a, di a different perception of, of what they see on TV. Um, I watch all this, and this just doesn't deter me from, from my decision as an independent to vote for Mr. Trump and not for Mrs. Hillary Clinton. Well, let me ask you this, because, you know, part of what the presidency is, right? I mean, it's not all powerful. You know, the president doesn't have a magic wand. He can't make all the policy. He needs Congress, et cetera. But the president is sort of symbolic of our national self, right? He's kind of the, the avatar for America. Do you feel comfortable, you know, I don't know if you're a mom. I don't know if you have daughters. Same. But you, you do, okay, of having having them be asked to look up to and respect a man who has said, let, let's look at what he said about Carly Fiorina. Um, Look at that face. 
Why would anyone vote for that? That's what he said about a woman who was running for president in her own right, um, who was a business person just like he is, who I think deserved equal respect to him. Uh, let's go to what he said about Ted Cruz's wife, mm -hmm. Heidi Cruz. I mean, he retweeted a really vile post that essentially made out Heidi Cruz to be ugly uh, in comparison to his own wife. Somebody who's that coarse, that mean, and that misogynistic, do you think that you would ask your children to look up to that person? You know, um, this is probably going to sound very selfish on my part, but I think that we're all very selfish in the end, especially um, when you want to uh, make better opportunities for yourself and take advantage of what's been a very oppressive situation in this country for the last couple of years. And I don't usually like to talk bad about um, um, Hillary Clinton. I think that she has many merits. But in retrospect, um, when you look back on everything that she went through with the different women that went through, fled through uh, Mr. Clinton's life, everything that she went through in the White House, and also past events, it's, it's pretty much apples for apples. See, no, see, now that's, that's the problem. It's not apples for apples. Hillary Clinton didn't cheat on her husband. Her husband cheated on her. And you're trying to equate that with, you didn't even mention it, but Donald Trump cheating on not one wife, but two wives. It's, it's not apples to apples, it's apples to oranges. And for some reason, people are always trying to tie Bill Clinton's infidelities and uh, his wife's reaction to his infidelities to uh, uh, Donald Trump. And uh, they don't want to uh, just understand that, you know, it was Trump that did what he did. Clinton, Hillary Clinton is running against Donald Trump. She did, was not uh, unfaithful to her husband. Donald Trump is running against Hillary Clinton. He was unfaithful to not just one wife, but two. So it's not apples to apples. What I try to engage in joy, um, precisely as a single mom of a 19 year old son, is the fact that he stands on a platform that is is important to me in general whether it's the tax plan whether it's the child exemption plan whether it's the senior health care plan whether it's repeating obamacare so i try to look through the, the 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 muddy waters and i try to go to where i know i need to be i need to have more opportunities i need to have the opportunity to have a better job to have a better income to not have to pay the 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 abysmal uh, monthly payment that I do to my health care every single month. Um, that is what I see. And I know it probably sounds very selfish that I, I'm not looking at this as, 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 as a point, but this isn't what makes me decide whether I am or I'm not going to vote for him. I, if, you put, if you put a blanket on both of them and you looked at the qualities that each one had, let's say they both have scandals, they both have scandals, what he represents is what I want, whether it's the tax plan, the repealing Obamacare, the conservative values, and that's what I look at. I don't think that those things that happened in the past, or perhaps just his persona, should um, decide. It's not going to decide for me at this point. Like I said, anything can change. I'm an independent right now voting for Mr. Trump, but I could have voted for Miss Hillary Clinton as well. Yeah. All right, everything that she said is rational and valid and I would be willing to defend exactly what she said. The problem is Donald Trump doesn't press those issues that she's talking about. Donald Trump is the one that basically, once he's attacked, goes down into the gutter, and you can see for yourself for the last basically five days, he stayed in the gutter. We haven't heard him, you know, uh, pressing uh, all the issues that most Americans are concerned about. He's fixated on this uh, former Miss Universe uh, uh, contestant, and he just will not get off of it. He should have been off of it the second day, and we wouldn't be talking about this crap right now. And, and, you know, and I hear what you're saying, and I know that a lot of, you know, conservative people of color really do focus on things like tax cuts mm -hmm. and that, you know, for you personally, you see that there's an economic benefit to you that a Republican would be in the White House. I understand that, but you talk about conservative values, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't really think it's apples to apples. I don't think Hillary Clinton has ever said um, things like this uh, about women. I mean, we have uh, him having called... A, a, a journalist the C word, yeah, called her editor and did that. You said you have a 19-year-old son. Yeah. If your son did that, 
Would you approve? No, not at all. Not at all. But he's had an, another type of upbringing. But, but let's not forget, Joy, also some of the things that happened, the confrontations and, and comments. Yeah, see, and that's what I like about this lady. Joy asked her a straight-out question. She gave a straight-out answer, unlike uh, some of the other Trump surrogates who uh, wouldn't even answer that question but automatically spin to make an attack on Clinton. So that's what, in my mind, gives this uh, woman um, credence as far as making her arguments. I'm sad that Hillary has Has she made passed. a comment of that kind? Well, um, not lately. She, not she, lately. You no, know, she referred to me as a deplorable, but I didn't take it personal. See, no, and no, she didn't defer, refer to you as a deplorable, all right? Because based on what I'm seeing here, you're not a racist, you're not a misogynist, you're not a xenophobe, etc. okay? The deplorables were all in that category, and she walked it back, uh, basically saying it wasn't 50%, it was some. You obviously are not a deplorable, so she wasn't talking about you. Because I'm not a deplorable. The fact that I vote, that I'm going to vote for Mr. Trump doesn't make me a deplorable. It makes me a person that is looking out for my needs, which is what's happening in this country. I think that many people are tired of establishment. I think that people are looking further. He's basically, if you took him and, like I said, you placed a blanket over him or you took someone else and put him in his place, people aren't necessarily perhaps voting for him, but they're voting for what he stands for. One of the things that I don't particularly care for is late term. Uh, late-term abortions, which is something that she has a heavy platform on. I don't have a problem with you having an abortion. I wouldn't have an abortion, but I don't want to pay for it. And but see, that's the thing, uh, w which I guess Joy's going to point out to her. There's the Hyde Amendment, so uh, we aren't paying for those abortions. So in a couple of instances, uh, Ms. Garcia uh, didn't really have a complete grasp of all the facts and ramifications um, as, as far as uh, Donald Trump's plans were concerned. And I don't blame her for that because, hell, nobody's got a complete grasp on uh, what Trump is talking about because he hasn't given us really a whole lot of details. But the few details uh, that uh, we have received from him, i.e. Uh, his tax plan, um, that basically has been uh, shot down by pretty much uh, all of the reputable uh, economic uh, researchers and analysts. But again, you know, she's trying to make some pretty good points. She's missing a little here and there. And I don't think that that should be, um, that, that, that's not my particular standpoint. For Once I have it, I totally respect it. Like I said, as an independent, I have some Democratic values and I have some Republican values, but I want to vote for the one that I think is best for me. In the end, can you blame me? Well, uh, I just want to put it that the public doesn't pay for abortions. There's a Hyde Amendment that doesn't allow that to happen. But I want to uh, respect what you had to say and allow my panel to come into the conversation, if that's all right with you. Let me bring in Ali, Vita Ali Vitale, who is an MSNBC, con who's an MSNBC journalist, uh, reporter. Teray, MSNBC contributor. Uh, and Ali actually has been covering the Trump campaign for NBC News. Joe Connison is the editor-in-chief for the National Memo. And civil rights lawyer Lisa Bloom are all in the panel. So we have a big mega panel here. Uh, and I'm going to start, um, Ali, with you because you have been out um, on the campaign trail. You listened um, to what Ileana had to say. Is that the argument that you hear Trump supporters making? That, okay, he said some terrible things, but, you know, Hillary Clinton, you know, I don't know. What, what is the argument that you hear echoed back to you as to why people are supporting Donald Trump despite all of this? Largely, yes. It's it's of that ilk. It's the, it's the idea that they care more about what he says on immigration, what he says on national security. Those things really resonate with him. But what I find it interesting, and I was talking to a bunch of people in Melbourne, Florida, when we were there a few days ago, and I was asking them, what do you think about the tweets in general? At this point, he hadn't tweeted what he tweeted the other night. And a lot of them say the only criticism they'll level is, it's not going to make me not want to vote for him. But I wish he'd stop. I wish he would pull it back a little bit. I wish he'd focus on the issues a little bit more. So there is this thought that these things are a distraction. But that being said, I've asked women, what do you think about when he brings up that Hillary Clinton is in some way to blame for her husband's infidelities? And they'll be like, well, if she can't control her husband, she can't control the country. And that, and that is such an idiotic statement. That is a statement of somebody that's uh, just looking to conflate. Because, number one... Uh, how is a woman supposed to control her husband? So that's that. That's just ridiculous. You know, one, I was searching for another word, but ridiculous basically comes to mind. Mentality really exists. So when you see him 
reviving these attacks on Bill Clinton and somehow painting them as a Hillary Clinton problem, that's something that resonates with his supporters. I don't know that that gains him anything new with the people that he's trying to appeal to in the general, mm -hmm. but the people that show up to his rallies right now feel that way they and they hear that and they and they agree with that. And is it is it it's similar to Ileana? Is it because they just really believe that they that, that tax cuts and repealing the Affordable Care Act are more important to them than whether the president is sort of piggish? Well, I think it's I think it's much less. If you bring up the idea that there's a sexist tinge to this or there's a misogynist tinge to this, a lot of them push back on that immediately because they really do feel what he's saying about Hillary Clinton is warranted. Even the women? Even the women. Okay. And that's what's amazing to me is you'll ask them about his past comments about even Rosie O'Donnell or, or right after the debate. They didn't see any issue with a lot of the things that he said that night. And the reason that they feel that way is a lot of them are what one of them termed to me, ABC, any, anyone but Clinton. Yeah. So at this point, they feel like they don't have any other option other than to go to Trump, despite the fact that a lot of the things that he's saying are really hard to defend when yeah. you look at the fact that on Twitter the other night, he's basically slut-shaming this woman. It's not about the idea of a sex tape. Whether that exists or not is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. It's the idea that she was expressing sexuality in a way and, and he's someone who's not been mute on his own yeah. past history <laughs> to say nothing right? of her weight versus his own her weight but it's it's generally like a it's an attack on on, on female sexuality and yeah. it's, a dog, it's a lesser dog whistle than we hear in before i bring it i want to go i'll bring lisa luna i'm gonna let the guys in as well but um iliana it, it, if we fast forward it to donald trump is not candidate donald trump uh and this is for iliana um if he was the president of the United States and continued to say the things that he is saying now, continue to disparage people uh, like Ms. Machado, would you be comfortable with that? Um, I would want him to rectify that. I see that that, that moment perhaps that he had at 3 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning as a vulnerable moment, just like Hillary when she... She was on stage uh, and look, all this on. deplorables. I think that I think that as their candidates, you really people, think that's really the I mean, sorry? really, seriously. Mm -hmm. If she said some of Donald Trump's supporters are deplorable, and let's just be clear, mm -hmm. some of Donald Trump's supporters are connected to the neo-Nazi movement, part of the alt-right. People like David Duke. Do you think well, those people are deplorable? See, notice her shaking her head. Okay, what Joy Reid said was exactly right. And you notice that she was shaking her head like, uh, no, no, he, he's not. But it's true. And she's compartmentalizing uh, that particular portion of the Trump supporters away from herself because women cannot, especially middle-class women, suburban women, uh, rational women, cannot vote for Trump if he's a racist. So she can't pull that piece of it into the uh, Trump, uh, Trump world. Otherwise, she, in her own mind, would have to say that she couldn't vote for him. Uh, I just wanted to point that out, you know, th that head shaking when Joy brought up the uh, neo-Nazi uh, support that Trump has. Now, and she's also going to try to... Uh, I don't know about defend it, but she's going to try to uh, claim ignorance about it. I don't think she talked about. Yeah. No, she didn't talk about you mm -hmm. because I'm listening to you. You sound. You're, you seem to be a perfectly nice woman, and you, you're, you're more focused on the economic stuff. She wasn't talking about you. Mm -hmm. She was talking about neo Nazis. Do you think neo Nazis are deplorable? I don't think that has anything to do with Mr. Trump. On the contrary, but he's got ties. They're, same, they're supporting same him. And he's supporting, and he's happy to have their support. He's mm -hmm. got. Steve no, Bannon he, uh, no. was a, no, no. Steve Bannon said that the outfit that he ran, Breitbart.com, is essentially a home of the alt right, which is sort of a hipster neo-Nazi movement. I, like they're in his coalition. I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, you're, you're not uncomfortable. No, with that? no, no. I, I don't know of that. I see. Now she's claiming ignorance because if it's proven to her that. Part of the Donald Trump support are these neo-Nazis. She's got to back away completely from her support from Trump. You could see see that. So by her ignoring that particular segment of Trump support, she could still maintain uh, that she's voting uh, strictly on, you know, I guess economic issues. If you just want to uh, lock in that particular piece.
I don't think that, I don't think that, I don't think that that would be, uh, I don't think that would be liable here at this point. I really don't think that, that Mr. Trump at this point, with everything he's invested, with all of the emphasis that he puts, I mean, he is resilient. He's constant. He's on the road. He's in three cities at once. But what would allow something like that? I just, I just don't let, let me go to Lisa Bloom. What do you make of this? You've, you've heard now um, what uh, Ileana's had to say. You've heard. Uh, Directly for a moment, sure. woman to woman, because I think we as women, we're always trained to put ourselves last and to not think of women's issues as important and everything else is more important and you know we'll just sort of take a back seat and you're obviously very intelligent and you asked to be respected and, and I do respect you because I see you really struggling with the issues um, you know you're not just sort of a die in the wool knee-jerk you know Trump supporter I see you as a very thoughtful person what makes you think that Mr. Trump doing this a month before the election is going to change after the election you know, he's fat shaming women, he's slut shaming Alicia Machado, implying that there's a sex tape and that completely undercuts everything that she has to say. Apparently there is no sex tape, but even if there was, he himself is an aficionado of sex tapes. I mean, this is a man who's been deeply punishing to women his entire life, his entire campaign, even when it's harming him in the election, he just can't stop himself. And don't we value ourselves as women enough to say that this man is just not acceptable for us, not acceptable for our daughters, not acceptable for the girls in America? Well, I can. Okay. Um, you really got to pay. This lady really wears her emotions on her sleeve because uh, at the beginning of uh, Lisa Boom's statements to her, you could sh see her shaking her head up and down, and uh, then and then uh, as Lisa progressed. Uh, she appeared to have an openness until Lisa got to a certain point, and then she seemed to tense up when uh, Lisa started uh, talking about the, the uh, slut shaming and the aficionado of uh, sex tapes. Anyway, that's just my observation, and you know I'm not a professional, so I could be wrong. Pretty much say the same when you um, when you flat out. I'm going to flat out say it. I didn't want to say it. Um, what better example than what Bill Clinton did in the, in the White House with Monica Lewinsky going in? But see again, she's this is Hillary Clinton that is running against Donald Trump, and they are always going back to Bill, which is wrong. Bill is not running; it's Hillary. The White House, he also was infamous for another notorious affair. There's Paula Jones, there's a whole bunch of things. So when, when like I said, if we're going to put apples for apples, you're talking... It's not apples for apples if you're comparing Bill Clinton. <laughs> if you're comparing Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton, but you're talking about Bill Clinton's infidelities. It's not apples to apples. Bill is not running. Hillary is. Uh, something that can presumably happen, but we're talking about also, we're comparing it to perhaps what already did happen in the White House during the Bill Clinton administration. But, now, not running for is, I, but, it, but you know, you want to know something though? A lot of people seem to think that Hillary will be an extension of Bill Clinton, which let me tell you something. The eight years that Bill Clinton was in the White House, they weren't bad. Let me tell you something, it was probably one of the best years for me. And I remember walking around the hallways, I had just had my baby boy, and I remember everyone saying, well, we, we don't want him impeached at this point, regardless of what he did to her because the, the country is doing well. So is that selfish or is that but, not but selfish? I, listen, listen, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't like what Bill Clinton did. I, you know, I'm a sexual harassment attorney for 30 years and I thought what he did was terrible. Mm -hmm. And I think Hillary Clinton was the victim of that. But here I we agree. are 20 years later and your candidate, with all due respect, just yesterday is tweeting out a bunch of lies about a Latina woman who's had the guts to come out against him. I represent Jill Harth, who's a woman who who uh, accused him in court papers of sexual harassment mm -hmm. back in 1997. He settled that case within weeks because I think he was so afraid of it. So Donald Trump himself has a long history of really being overtly cruel to women. If you're not young, white, thin, plastic uh, surgery enhanced, you know, you're just not worthy in his eyes. How dare Alicia Machado put on a few pounds when she was Miss Universe? I mean, wasn't she a wonderful role model for women? Couldn't she have just put on a few pounds and still been Miss Universe and look like well, you know, what a lot of women in America like. give, me, give me one second. We are, we are up against a, a, a break. We do have a, a clock and we, we want to get the full panel in, but I want to give uh, Ileana a chance to answer. All right. Lisa Bloom made a lot of compelling arguments there. Um, and uh, Miss Garcia is, I guess, going to attempt to uh, respond. 
All right, my terrific panel is back with me. Uh, and Ileana Garcia, um, who is with Latinas for Trump. Um, Lisa, I think really, the two of you had a really powerful exchange. I want to give you an opportunity um, to respond. Um, just on this question, as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, the idea of having a president of the United States who is doing this firsthand. I mean, Hillary Clinton is not Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is not running for president. This is Hillary Clinton, who is the victim, really, of her husband's infidelity. Um, but how do you answer what Lisa Bloom had to say before the break? She did have a series of reactions, uh, though, during her, her process, which I feel for her. <laughs> I feel for her because she went through it on several occasions. Um, they weren't necessarily, um, I, I consider, the most correct. She was obviously defending her husband, defending herself. But she wasn't very pro-woman at that moment when she was defending herself. And that was a typical reaction. Action. And if we're going to once again measure apples for apples, we can compare. Is that those apples two. for apples, though, Ileana? I mean, you're talking about a wife who was the victim of her husband's infidelity. Several times. You're comparing that to Donald Trump, who himself has said women are pigs, dogs, disgusting. I mean, this would be the president of the United States. You don't. What conservative values does Donald Trump have in your view? If he speaks that way about women, up to and including within the last 48 hours. Well, um, what can I tell you with regards to that? That's just obviously um, that's part of his transparency. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to defend that because I don't want. I don't want. I'm, I'm getting offended here on social. Well, media I'm glad videos. that you don't want you know, to. No, I, I, I don't. Actually makes I me don't. Happy. But you know what? It, what it represents for me is all the things that. Um, number one, I see him as a person who hires women, who deals with women. Perhaps with these particular women, didn't have didn't have a, a good interaction um to my better understanding this no they probably want stacked and racked that was probably it situation with rosie o'donnell was something that was created through a situation where he was defending kelly ripa but in the end it's about i'm sorry to say joy it's about it's about me it's about everything that he can offer not only the women or the african americans or the hispanics but just all of us in general for the better of the country whether it's the tax plans whether it's reinforcement in child care whether it's reinforcement in health care it's all of those other things that unfortunately right now i'm not seeing let's talk about the democratic side i like i said i don't i don't I don't, well, I don't think that any, either one of them should be elected because the other one is worse. I think that uh, whoever it is that you decide to okay. vote for is because they're offering you something that you think exactly. is And that's why we don't want to get into exactly. it. Exactly. Right. We don't want to, exactly. we're not going to get into the uh, sort of a reverse argument because we do want to stay on this. Um, I want to bring the rest of the panel in. Um, Teray and Joe Coniston are also here with us. Um, Teray, you had a comment. You know, a lot of people have mentioned this notion of Trump as transparent and authentic. Fine, he is transparent about being racist, sexist, Islamophobic, and all this other stuff. So I don't give you any credit for being open about your racism and your sexism. Look, one day we will sit around and say, when did the Trump campaign actually end? And some people will say it'll be the Khan moment, the Machado moment. No, it ended in his childhood when he was trained to be a bully and was unable to let anything ever go. The, and like your point earlier about the existential nature of being a president, we've seen this with Barack Obama, the way that the country is transformed just by the sort of person you are and seeing this dignified black family in the White House has been so powerful for all Americans. Can you imagine what America's psychic energy would be with this man where clearly white men are put on a pedestal and women are lesser, black people are lesser, Latinos are lesser, Muslims are lesser. I mean, like, that would be psychically damaging for the country more than any of these policies, which we have no idea which one of them he'll actually try to enact because they're all impossible, right, Joe? The, the wall is impossible. The Muslim ban is yeah. impossible. I mean, like, you know, none of these things are actually possible. Also, the and, and tax plan is not going to help anybody uh, like Ms. Garcia, who says she's having trouble paying for her health care. It's for the ultra-rich, okay? And she should do a little more research, not only about the tax plan, but the campaign manager and a few other aspects of the campaign that she seems to know nothing about, in fact. So there's that. But the other thing I wanted to address is there's it's misogyny to attempt to blame Hillary Clinton for what her husband did. OK, straight up. And it's not an accident that this comes from the Trump campaign now, which has hired or brought in Roger Ailes, who was too much of a misogynist for Fox News. And he was booted out of there by Rupert Murdoch, who's not exactly a progressive on women's yeah. issues. OK, yeah. but he's OK for the Trump campaign. And he is the one who is directing these attacks on Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and her keeping her marriage. By the way, these are people who've been married three times. Uh, Trump, you know, cheated on his second yeah. wife. Uh, Giuliani, Newt Gingrich, yeah. we saw who served divorce papers on his wife in the hospital. I mean, 
Hillary Clinton, whether you agree with her or not, decided that she wanted to preserve her marriage for her family, for her daughter. That, to me, is the conservative value, isn't it? I mean, if you're going to talk about conservative values, she's a Methodist. She made marriage vows, and she decided to keep them to the best of her ability, despite a lot of pain and a lot of trouble. Yeah. And a lot of nonsense from people who wanted to delve into their personal life for political and partisan gain. Include, including David Bossie, who's now part of the campaign. If you think about oh, Citizens United, yeah. that is David Bossie's uh, little pet project, Citizens United, uh, to attack Hillary Clinton. He's on the campaign. And I have to really quickly ask Lisa Bloom, because you did represent somebody who filed sexual harassment charges um, uh, against Donald Trump, what does it do to you in sort of your spirit to know that not only is Roger Ailes advising this campaign, but these people would be empowered in a Trump presidency. Rudy Giuliani, you know, I don't know what job Trump would give him, but people like Newt Gingrich, people like Steve Bannon, who himself was accused by his own wife um, of violence and of running her out of town so that she couldn't tell on him. Well, it turns out that hiring a guy who was just fired for sexual harassment to help you prepare for a debate against a very smart woman who raises misogyny claims against you was not a great strategy. I mean, who knew? Who could have imagined such a thing? And listen, I refuse to be afraid. I'm channeling Susan B. Anthony and Ida B. Wells and all of the women who struggled and some of them died for our right to vote as women. Women are going to run Trump out of this campaign. Women are going to elect Hillary Clinton. We vote in greater numbers than any other group. Hillary Clinton was brilliant in bringing up the Alicia Machado issue in strategizing to drop the video. Donald Trump rock, walked right into her trap, including yesterday at 3 a.m. by keeping the issue alive. And ultimately, it's going to be women who decide this election. And Ileana, I would love to go out with to, uh, for a beer with you sometime. <laughs> like Not this early in the morning, because I think you are open to the concept of valuing women and girls Lisa, in this can election I ask you a question? and putting us first. Can I ask you a question? Uh, the yes. Aren't one. we aren't we innocent until proven guilty? Who, who, who are we in general as an attorney? Aren't we all innocent until proven guilty? Yes. It seems like uh, what, I've, what I've heard here recently is, is, is just the other way around. I'm sure that all of you have, have, have valid points. I've heard uh, some ethnocent, some ethnocentric points of view as well. But we're talking about words out of own mouth and his own like fingers said, at 3 a.m. Yeah, but in the end, it's all about, like I said, it's all, all about needs and it's all about perception and it's all about filtering. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Joe, 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 the author, the, Joe Connison. Yeah, he said that I know nothing about the tax plan. I know enough that it's 12, 25, and 32, and at a given point, there's uh, there's money that's going to come back to me but without, I mean, without receiving a raise. I, I mean, this is just grassroots. Okay, uh, but okay. Uh, yeah. Corporate taxes from 35%. Hold on a second. Yeah, Ileana, go on. The fraction of 1%. The greatest benefit of the tax plan goes to the top fraction of 1%, okay? 12, 25, uh, and, you, you and 32 is nothing to do with the top It's agreed percent. to by every tax expert in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, that's it's, no yeah, question. It's a math attack. But we'll yeah. regardless of any of this, yeah. he could be talking about taxes and jobs, which are great issues for him, but it's instead not. we're talking about we're talking this about because this. he made it the issue we're talking about. And I think that is a good place to end it because that is the point. Donald Trump doesn't talk very much about his tax plan. He talks about women's weight and their looks. Um, I do hope that Ileana will, will come back. Uh, I think we should all have cocktails together and talk about this. <laughs> yes. I do feel like you are struggling a little more. Than, I mean, you, you were very, very uh, good today and very coherent, but you know, I end, feel like you may be struggling a little bit because you, we want to be proud of our president as well, yeah, right? Well, yeah, I, and, I think, and, and, yeah. and you know what it's about? It's about, I, I think that my decision was also based on the last eight years. For me, they were very well, apathetic. I, I, I was part of that middle class that just, yeah. I saw shrink. And you prioritize women. Eliana. Yeah, absolutely. Prioritize yourself. Yourself. We're going to leave it there. Well, unfortunately, we do have to leave it there, but I do hope we will also think it's not just about a tax cut for myself. It's also about, you know, I think Tori made the excellent point. It's about who we are as a country. So hopefully we can all have cocktails together and discuss this further. All right. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I thought that was an excellent, excellent segment. Uh, the lady was basically trying to defend her position. Although I didn't agree with her, her right to state her position and uh, to stake out a claim was fine. Uh, she did have some weaknesses as far as ignoring uh, some obvious facts, but it is what it is. But at least this was what I would call a really respectful debate.